So, no, but like it makes sense because yeah, you have ten seconds left. And my sources are like logic as well because if uh -huh. you think about it, like the tiny plastic straws, they won't do much to like help the environment. So I think like when Starbucks and okay. like other companies, hold on, hold on, hold on, when Starbucks and oh, other companies, when Starbucks, this ten more seconds, ten more seconds. When Starbucks and other companies, they switch to like paper straws to um, like help the environment. I think it's actually like a marketing or like a publicity stunt to like pretend that they actually care about the environment, but it's not, you know. Same with like Walmart, like changing or charging like 10 cents per bag. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Caleb, what about yeah, this? that's it. Plastic bags? So I'm saying they should be banned, right? Yeah. Okay, so plastic is like, Bad for the environment, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes um, plastic bags in the ocean they look like jellyfish, and then turtles eat plastic, and they get really sick. Okay. Don't is you love turtles? Is that your argument? If you don't ban plastic bags, then cute little turtles will die in the ocean. See, Hajim, but that's not like the concern. And statistics animals are gonna die. Statistics show no, no, that no, 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 um, animals are gonna die either wait, way. Wait, 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 no, no, like, no, 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 no. Statistics show that um, in a hypothetical theoretical maybe world that uh, plastic bags are banned, then at least 100 <laughs> sea turtles are saved. Okay, and I'm saying that like the 100 sea turtles that are saved, it's like not Look, to sound, not to Joseph sound, not to sound, sound like, not to sound like incompassionate okay. or anything, right, right, right. Okay. but like it's, it doesn't really, it's not really worth like banning like papers or plastic straws and like paper bags like worldwide. So you Joseph, know? Just cares about statistics and like. No, big I don't words. care about statistics, but like, I have I'm, a just big heart the, and I love I'm just saying the. I'm just saying. I'm just saying the comfort. The comfort of being able to use a plastic bag, and like how cheap it is, it, it the pros of that outweigh the lives of like a hundred sea turtles. Well, it was a minimum of a hundred. It may be like a thousand, actually. Okay, but <laughs> like they're gonna die due okay, to okay, the that's plastic enough, that's in the ocean from other choice. companies. Either way. Huh. What's your final decision? Well, let's see. No, I didn't. All right. No, no, stop bribing me. Stop. Okay. Uh. <laughs> hey, that's cheating. I'll I'll have to go on Joseph with this one because no. Caleb, how did you, you you literally just mentioned sea turtles and that's it. Okay. Wait, what did you say? Well, like, there's already enough plastic in the ocean to kill the sea turtles, so it's just like... Okay, so Joseph and Caleb just don't care about animals. <laughs> is, that a, is that a poll? <gasps> I am the winner. Oh, no way, yeah. bro. <laughs> no way. I'm actually the winner. Okay, well, thank you for participating. It's okay to lose, Joseph. Um, don't cry. <laughs> yes, thank you, Joseph. Uh, we'll have, we might have someone else on next week, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we'll go into announcements now. So this Saturday, or next, next Saturday, on the 19th, we have our hiking, our special in-person hiking trip uh, at 10 a.m. at Los Penasquitos Canyon Trail. Yeah, so we'll have information up wherever you can find it on our website or Instagram or Discord. So yeah, that'll be in person again. Um, our first big event in person special. So you guys should come out. And we also have our Wednesday night prayer at 7 p.m. as always. And then 7.30? Yeah, no, 7. 7.30? Yeah, oh, 7. Shoot. Come on, Hajin. I lied. I was just kidding, guys. OK, so please welcome up to Tim. Time of prayer. Hello. So yes, the hike we're gonna do is going to be really easy. It's just going to be flat and then it's going to end up at a waterfall. Okay, so come, it's going to be like round trip two miles. Easy, easy exercise. Um, so yeah, please come. That'd be fun with all of us there to meet. But yeah, let's get this Sunday service started with some prayer. Um, yeah, we're going to go into a series 
on the Holy Spirit, right? And so let's just start on this first Sunday um, going into this series, just, yeah, asking the Holy Spirit for help, right? Um, asking for his help to bring us wisdom and knowledge and all the things that P. Dana is going to be preaching on and that really we may grow to have a greater understanding of it. Um, yeah, and also grow to see how much more we need it in all of our lives. So let's just pray for that. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is what really brings change in our lives, right? That's the thing that God sends within us to really give us the fuel to do these things, right? And so let's just pray for each other. Uh, let's pray for everybody on the Zoom to, yeah, that we as a community can, can grow from this time and, and going into this subject, right? Um, not only pray for yourself, but just... Yeah, that the Holy Spirit will just continue to speak to us, and it will speak to us even louder here today. So let's pray. Father God, on this Sunday, we submit to you. Lord, we submit to your spirit here. We submit that you are greater than us, Father, and that your love covers every single one of us here. Yeah, we just ask for your spirit to fill this place, to fill our worship, to fill the word, Lord, that we may hear you clearly here, that you will speak into all of our lives, Lord. We welcome you into this place, Lord, that we will just worship you with hearts filled with joy and, and honor and in awe of who you are. Father God, we thank you, so be with us here, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why can we all rise for worship? Let's sing that praise. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. And we sing. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing. We 
personally, um, and maybe you're feeling this way too. Um, you know, sometimes I just want to rush through things, and, you know, like, I have so many worries right now, <laughs> like, I'm worrying about finals or assignments, um, about the future, um, but right now, let's just put those aside, um, and welcome God into this space, um, welcome His Spirit, um, and let's just take things slow with him. Yeah, let's just take things slow.
Yeah, just right now, if you're able and willing, um, you could put out your hands in front of you in the posture of receiving. Um, and just ask, Lord, I want to hear your voice. Lord, I want to hear um, what you have in store for me today. Um, so let's just lift up that prayer to him um, in a posture of surrender. Let's do that right now. Let your glow. 
This, this song in, in many ways perfectly captures um, just kind of the desire that, that I've been praying for our ministry, um, that, that the presence and the Spirit of God would fall in this place. And one of the things in light of that is um, for us to get an understanding of like really what the Holy Spirit is for us. Um, that we, we talk about it all the time and, and you guys see and hear like, hey, these peop, different people like feel the leading and the prompting of the Spirit and like, what is all of that, right? And we, we want to go on a journey that will, in hopes, make the Holy Spirit um, a little bit more accessible to you guys. That he, He's not just like a such a foreign idea that like we can't understand but as we saying today it, it's it's a presence and it's a gift that we are able to carry and that's our hope um, in this time and so Jesus we ask right now that the promise that you gave to your people God, that as a ministry, as your children, Lord, we would be able to receive it as well. God, you are not distant. You are not oblivious to our day-to-day. -day. But Lord, you are mindful, not just of every important decision we make, but Lord, even in the small ones. Lord, you delight in small details of our life, God. And that's what you want to be a part of. And so, Lord, we invite you. We invite you into our hearts, into our lives. May we begin a journey of not just understanding who you are, but, Lord, also the empowering that you do for us. And so we give this day to you. Lord, we love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. <clears throat> so today, as I just shared, we're, we're going to begin a series on kind of the Holy Spirit. Um, we're going to call it Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. And one of the things that I, I want you guys to do in uh, this time um, that we're going to go through it at least through the summer, probably into the fall. And what I want to really encourage you guys is um, for those of you guys who are here in person and for those of you guys on the Zoom, I want to highly encourage you guys um, that two things, bring you a physical Bible Right, bring a physical Bible. If you don't have one, it's okay. You can use your phone. But if you do have a physical Bible, bring that. And also bring something to take notes in. 
um, because what I really want to do in this series is not just not just say things for you guys to hear it and it goes in one year and out the other, but man, for you guys to really um, to take this and, and let it sink deeply into your hearts. I want to really encourage you guys to start um, bringing those things when you guys come to church, um, if not this week, starting next week, okay? One of the things that's also going to happen is um, we're going to be doing some um, practices uh, in our Sunday service. And so for those who are on the Zoom, um, I want to really encourage you guys, if at all possible, um, for you guys to start coming in person, all right, as uh, we, become, we get to that place of opening more um, full capacity um, and everyone is safe and all of that stuff, uh, we want to really encourage you guys to come. All right, because there are going to be some things that we have, we're going to do in person that unfortunately um, we just can't do virtually, okay? Uh, and so please um, do your best uh, to come. Every week I feel like we get like one new person, um, but then someone else doesn't show up. And so if we can get all of you guys here, um, that will be amazing. And I understand, right, that it, it might be hard, it might be difficult to do so. Um, but we do want to encourage you, if you are at all possible, uh, to come in person. All right? And so, yeah, this is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be exciting. And I hope that for a lot of us, we're going to learn. And so the way that we're going to do this series is going to be a little bit different than uh, what we did for the book of Galatians, right? We went through the book of Galatians. It took us about four months to get through it. Um, and what we did there was literally we like broke down verse by verse, right? We, we went through every single verse and we kind of broke it down. Uh, this series, we're not going to really take like a book and break it down. But what, what I want to do is I want to begin first by uh, explaining kind of what the Holy Spirit is, all right? Who He is to us. And, and from there... Uh, we're going to get into a place of really learning, okay, this is what the Holy Spirit is. Okay, what does it mean for me in my day-to-day, -day? all right? And then from there, we'll learn like these little things about what we can do um, with the Holy Spirit in our life, okay? And so um, it's going to be important um, for you guys to stay on track with us, um, learn, take notes. And after every Sunday at the end of the service, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment to kind of like practice uh, what we learn or at least bare minimum discuss what we've learned, okay? And so today, um, what I'm going to briefly talk about today, um, and I'm going to do my best right now, I promise you, to try to keep it short, okay? <laughs> To keep it short, I, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna promise, but I have my fingers crossed. Okay, so that you can't hold me to it. But I'm gonna try. Uh, today, what I'm gonna talk about is just how the Holy Spirit is a gift to us. All right, that He is a gift to us, and and we're just gonna look at a few passages today. But we're going to start uh, in John chapter 13. All right, in John chapter 13. Uh, what is beginning in John chapter, end of John chapter 13 to about John chapter 17 is that Jesus is going to begin a discourse. He's going to begin a conversation with his disciples on what it's going to look like uh, once he leaves them. All right. So he's been kind of like warming them up. He's kind of been babying them into, hey, yo, I'm leaving. And, and like he keeps telling them, yo, I'm really leaving soon, okay? And the disciples are like, oh, it's okay, yeah, we know. We don't really know, but we, we're going to act like we know. And so they're, they're just kind of there, and Jesus keeps warning them, yo, I'm leaving, right? I'm going to leave you guys, but don't worry, all right? I'm going to give you something better. And, and so, you know, in John chapter 13, he begins the discourse first by washing the feet of the disciples, all right? So he begins his lesson in teaching his disciples and his people that if there is anything for Christians to do in this world, it is not this shandala, like, hey, let me use this Holy Spirit like a magician, right? But it is really the, the, the heart of service, right? The mark of a Christian, first and foremost, is, of course, a love, love for God, but it is also a heart that is willing to serve those around them. And he teaches them that. And at the end of it, right, he has this interaction with Peter that kind of sets off his 
uh, lesson on what the Holy Spirit is and what we're to do with the Holy Spirit. And so Simon, at the end, he says, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay my life down for you. And Jesus answered, you will lay your life down for me. Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. All right. So this Peter's response, it initiates a discourse about the Holy Spirit. All right. And this is the first thing that he kind of um, sheds light on what the Holy Spirit is, is that, Peter, you're not going to be able to keep your promise. All right, you say you're going to lay your life down for me. Right now, you're not going to be able to keep your promise. But what's important is, is that Jesus is not pointing out, like, how crappy Peter is, right? Like, Peter, you suck. You're not going to be able to keep your promise. He, that's not what he's shedding light on. What he's shedding light on is is not what Peter can or cannot do. It is what Jesus has done and what he's going to do after he leaves them. All right, that's the important thing. It is not what we can do. It's not what we can do. But it is what Jesus has done, what he's accomplished by the cross and his resurrection, and what he's going to do with that following, right, his death and his resurrection. And, and so what, what Jesus is trying to get Peter and the disciples and for all of us to understand is that faith is not determined by perfect obedience. All right? It is not determined. You can't determine what your faith is by how perfectly you obey God or how perfectly you listen to God or how perfectly you do church things. That's not what you put your faith on. That's not where you put your money on. But what you put it on is the unbroken faithfulness of Jesus. As some of you guys have said this before. It is not the strength of your faith, right? It is not the consist consistency of your faith, but it is the object of faith. It's, right? It is you, right? It is you putting your trust into Jesus that saves. It's not how strong you believe. It's not how consistent you believe. It's not how well you believe. It is that the object of faith is that you put it onto Him. And so oftentimes, like Peter, we got to go through some things to get to that place. Right? Peter had to deny Jesus in order for him to get to a better place of trusting in Him. All right? And so he's revealing that, hey, you're not going to be able to do it right now. But once I give you this promise, once I give you this helper, you're going to be able to do all things. And so right after that, he continues, right? Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. All right? So what is he saying? He's telling them, you won't be troubled. You won't feel overwhelmed. If you put your confidence, right, the word believe in John chapter 14, verse 1, the word believe, it means to have confidence, right? It means to have confidence. So we won't be troubled, we won't be overwhelmed if we put our confidence in His word, not in our circumstances, all right? And so Jesus, He's beginning to prep His people. Hey, believe in me. Don't be troubled. Don't be overwhelmed. Have confidence in what I'm saying. Right? Have confidence in... Am I cutting in and out? All right. Hopefully it stops. All right. So it's talking about having our confidence in His Word. Believe in what I say. Don't believe in your circumstances. Our Jesus, he, He's telling them and he's, he's starting to prepare for them, right? Yo, I'm leaving for a specific purpose, right? And that purpose is that I'm going to prepare a place for you. in heaven and, and what he's going to do is he's going to come back right to bring us there with him and so in the meantime right in the meantime as we do our best to live faithfully 
right, we are able to put our confidence in His Word. He says, hey, believe in me, right? Trust in me. Trust in what I am saying. When I, was, when I was thinking about this line, right, you won't be troubled if we put our confidence in His Word, not our circumstances, it immediately brought me to the place of, um, of me playing basketball, right? Because 90, 98% of the time, 99% of the time, if I ever told anybody that I played basketball, right, they would look at me with complete disrespect. Like I'm this like Asian dude with glasses, you know, and that's it, right? The, so many times when I go to the court and I'm looking for a pickup game, right, I'll, I'll go and like, you know, I have my glasses on, I have, you know, my basketball gear on, and I'm like looking for a pickup game of five, right? I'll go and, and this has ha happened to me more often than not. I'll go up and I'll ask someone, like, yo, Hajin is playing basketball, right? I'll go to Hajin and I'll be like, hey, yo, you have, you have five, right? Meaning, like, you have, you have enough people on your team. And, and he'll look at me, he'll look around, and he'll be like, yeah, I already got five, right? And I know he doesn't have five people, right? So I was like, all right, man, we'll see. And I'll mark him, right? Because I know next time I see him on the court, I'm going to dominate this fool, all right? And so a lot of these people, they, 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 won't, they won't believe my word. Right? They won't believe in what I say. And so it, 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 would, it would make me, yo, I'm going to make sure I prove myself to these suckers right? when I get on the court. And, and obviously Jesus is not doing it the way that I'm doing it. Right? I'm obviously this from a very uh, maybe insecure or maybe just a place. But Jesus, when he says to be troubled, right? Hold on, let me, can I get another mic? Can you, Hajin, can you grab me that one? Is it charging? Yeah, I just, it's bothering me. Check, check, check. All right, there we go. All right. So what was I saying? Yeah, so Jesus is nothing like me. Okay? A surprise, right? Jesus is nothing like me. When he says, let your hearts not be troubled, believe in God, believe in me, he, he, he's, he's coming from a completely different place than, than I am, right? When I say believe in what I say, right? Believe in my words. He, he, he's coming from a place where he has already pioneered, where he has already perfected it. And so he's calling us, right? And he's asking us, hey, trust in that. Trust in that because as we're able to trust in that, in verse 12, in John 14, 12, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever, again, believes in me, right, who has confidence in his word, will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. All right, so Jesus, he's not just saying that to be nice to us, right? He's not just saying that to, to just kind of like calm our fears. Like He's saying that because he genuinely believes that we are going to do the same works that he does and we're going to do greater works than him, right? And when he says greater works than him, it means that, that it's not that me and you are going to do better things than Jesus, right? But that idea of greater is that because that power, that empowerment is going to rest not on just one person, Jesus, but is going to rest on any person who follows him, it means that the work of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus, is able to um, be done by more people, and it's, supposed, and it's able to reach further places than by one person, than by thousands. All right? That's what he means by greater. But... We, we can't just brush over that where he says truly, truly. And when he uses that word truly, truly, he's really emphasizing, yo, listen up, right? This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is real, and I need you guys to pay attention, right? Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. So when we trust in him, when we have confidence in his word, 
were able to do the things that Jesus does or has done. How do we do that? How do we do the things that Jesus has done? All right? The first thing is this. In verse 15, if you guys didn't see that, I just tried to scroll my, my paper Bible. All right? That was so, that's so bad. All right? I tried to scroll my paper Bible up. All right? Anyways, in verse 15, it says this. All right? This is how we do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. All right? It's as simple as that. How do we show that we love God? We keep the commandments, right, to love God and to love people. But you see, often we, we get distracted. We love to get distracted by other people's sin and other people's brokenness that we don't want to deal with our own. Or we're, we're so ready to point, oh, yeah, that person sucks. Oh, that person isn't good. Oh, that person doesn't really believe in Jesus the way that they say it. Like, we're so busy pointing out those things that, that seldom do we work on, hey, what's going on with my heart? You know what? I, I, I'm a full-time sinner. I'm a full-time sinner. I, it's a full-time work for me to continually check myself, right, and to, to lay my life and to lay my heart at the feet of Jesus. Like, that takes a lot of work and effort. I don't have time to look at other people and be like, oh, look at him, right? Look at her. Look at what they're doing. They're not really followers of Jesus. Like, I don't have time for that. It calls us to love him and to love those around us. And so how does, how are we able to do this, right? How are we able to do this work? In the very next verse, in verse 16, he says this, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. See, he promises us, the Holy Spirit, right? the helper, the counselor, tongues of fire. He promises us that. And the primary goal of the Holy Spirit is the exaltation of Jesus. That is the main goal of the Holy Spirit in our life. All right? The Holy Spirit is not here to help us accomplish our dreams, all right? The Holy Spirit is not here to, to help us get whatever we want, all right? The primary goal of the Holy Spirit, the primary goal of this helper is to exalt the name of Jesus, is to give glory to the name of Jesus. Everything else is secondary. Everything else is secondary to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. All the gifts, all the empowerment that we receive, it funnels to glorify Jesus. Right, we get into trouble when we start using the gifts and we start using the Holy Spirit to gain things for ourselves. It's when we get in trouble. But the Holy Spirit, as He develops in us, this goal of exalting Jesus. He, what he does is he clothes us in power, right, and in humility. As we learned in Galatians, right, the fruit of the Spirit, that all of those things start to manifest in our life, right? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is holy, and so he produces the character of Christ in those in whom he dwells. Right? That's what the Holy Spirit does. Is he exalts Jesus, and what he does is that he also produces in us the character of Jesus, right? the likeness of Jesus in our heart. So for us as Christians, the older we get, the more we mature, ideally what you're also maturing in is becoming like Jesus. 
right, is developing the fruit of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all of that. Not only that, but also the works of Jesus. We should be growing in the works of Jesus, right? Not necessarily just healing people or words and different things like that, but the way that we love and the way that we wash one another's feet, all right? That is what he's trying to get us to do. And so for Jesus, it was better that he leaves so that his life will continue to be lived out through the body, right, which is the church, the body of Christ. It's not just a figure of speech. Right? It's not just a, a cool way of calling the church something, right, the body of Christ. No, now we are his hands and feet. We are his heartbeat. We are the way that Jesus now ministers to the world. Right? And so together, right? Together, me, you, teachers, other pastors, everybody, me and you, right? The people next to you, together, God's people extend the life of Jesus to the rest of the world. And that's what we are doing. Together, we are extending, right, the life of Jesus to all of those around us. That's our goal. That's the goal of the Holy Spirit, is that we will extend the name of Jesus to those around us. So listen to this, church. We're not just a gathering, Right? We're not just a gathering. We are a functioning body. So that means every single one of you who has joined us on the Zoom, every single one of you who has come in person to this service, you have something to offer today. As being part of the body, you have something to offer. Some of us have much to offer some of us have a little bit to offer. Whatever it is, right, we come with something to offer. If anything, the worship of the name of Jesus. And so when God, when we talk about God being sovereign, it, it doesn't mean that we be passive, all right? But to live into our placement in the body. Right, that's what it means. It means that, hey, you matter. It means that you matter. You are a part of this body. And also it means, hey, get to work. Do what you need to do. Do your part in this. And you see this presence, as much as it is the goal to exalt the name of Jesus, this presence builds a boldness and a confidence in our life. This is a presence. The Holy Spirit is a thing that follows us even when we are in the desert, even when we are in the place of Egypt or the place of bondage in our life. This presence follows us everywhere we go to comfort us, right, to to restore us, to encourage us, all for the sake of the name of Jesus. It's an empowering presence. The Holy Spirit is not just something we talk about, but He is a power in our life. So what do we do? All right, what do we do? Just two things. What we need to begin to do in this time is we need to examine our life according to the word, not the world. Uh, what I mean by that is we need, there's a need for our theology um, to connect to our life, right? Meaning what we know about God and what we study about God, it needs to connect to our life. Like often that's where we get in trouble. There's a disconnect. There's a disconnect in what we hear and what we're living out, all right? And so that's what we need to do. We need to examine our life according to the word of God, not the world. So that means that there needs to, as the summer, as we go through the summer, my hope and prayer is that your theology, every single one of us is a theologian, meaning 
we study God. All right? Every one of us is a theologian. Every one of us has some sort of idea of who God is. All right? Whether it's correct or not, that's a different question. But we all have a theology. All right? And what, that, what needs to happen, and what happens already is your theology, right, your study of God, it ultimately is connected to the way that you live. The way that you live reflects right, how you view God. And our goal is to correct it. Right? Our goal is so that we can see it in the right way. And the second thing is this. Treasure this gift. That's what we're going to learn to do this summer is treasure the gift of the Holy Spirit. We become like the God we adore and we serve. In Psalm 115, verse 8, it says this. It says, those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. And he's talking about the people who make idols for themselves. Right? He's saying that those who make those idols will become like them. And so do all who trust in them. We will become what we worship. We will become what we worship. We will become what we most adore. And our goal this summer is that we would treasure the gift of the Spirit, not so that I can accomplish what I want to, but that the name of Jesus would be exalted. That's our hope. That's our prayer in this time. And so, uh, Shirley, teacher, you can come up. We'll respond. I'm just going to pray for just one thing today. It's It's just that, God, we want to teach us how to treasure your presence. This gift that you have for us. I want to be able to treasure it. And as we learn to treasure that gift, we will begin to see God respond. God responds to those who delight in his name and in his presence. And so just on an individual level, we'll, we're going to do something at the end, but on an individual level, let's take a moment and let's lift that up as our prayer. That God, I want to treasure your presence. I want to treasure who you are. As we do that, church, we will see God move more and more. I hope that that's what you guys want. If you're not there, then we're going to pray for that. But let's begin with that right now. To say, just, just say, Jesus, I want to treasure you. Let's take a moment to lift that up, and then we'll respond in a song. But let's pray.
a little bit differently today. Um, today uh, is actually uh, Shirley teacher, um, well not her last Sunday, next week is technically her last Sunday, but uh, Shirley teacher will in, in about a few weeks or about a month, right, you'll be going to Boston. Um, and she'll be going to Boston for a year um, to be a part of a program that is uh, a teaching program um, for youth and children in difficult areas and circumstances. And it is it's such an amazing thing to see um, so many of our people, our teachers, and, and all sorts of different people go off and do um, things like that. Uh, but it's also uh, sad, right, to see uh, someone like Shirley Teacher Go, who's been here uh, for four years, and yeah, it's with it's with just joy and with sadness, but more joy, right? More joy uh, that we're able to uh, just bless Shirley Teacher and uh, her her journey, um, and so. But what I want to do is, if you guys can, will you just stand with us for a moment? Um, and uh, P. Tim and uh, anyone on the praise team, um, if you guys can just come up here. Um, and yeah, just anyone who feels that, man, they were somewhat blessed. And we're not going to like crowd over, but just like close enough where it's like, yo, I'm, I'm near. All right. And, and we're just going to take a moment to just pray for um, Shirley, teacher. And you guys could come up. It's okay. Um, and so let's take a moment. Anyone else that was blessed by her presence in the last four years, you guys can come up here. Um, if not, just where you are, just your hand, just extend it out towards her. Uh, and so let's just take a moment uh, to pray for her. Pray for her. Um, you know, thank God for the years and the time. Um, and pray for her upcoming year, um, going to another coast uh, to, to do a new thing. We want to pray, God, would you, would you continue to be with her and to anoint her to do your good work? And so let's pray for her right now, and then after a little bit, we'll close. And for the people on the Zoom, too, please uh, pray for her. All right, let's take a moment. And let's lift her up right now. Let's pray. Jesus, God, we thank you so much for Shirley. And 
God, all the things that you have walked with her through. God, the highs and, Lord, the lows. God, you know all those things because you weren't distant in it, but you were present. And I thank you, Lord, for her story, for her fight, for her hope in you, God. That that was not just for herself, but it was a testimony to many people, Lord, in, in our ministry and in our home church. God, that she was a blessing to many. And we just pray, God, Lord, that as she enters into this new chapter for this next year, God, that you would always, as you have been doing, Lord, you would continue to cover her, that you would continue to anoint her to do your good work, God. I pray, Lord, that that she would be able to continue to trust in you, Lord, to commit her future into your hands, God. It is not clarity that we need, but Lord, it is trust. And I pray that she would be able to trust you. Lord, to see the track record of all that you've done. Lord, you won't stop now. You won't stop now, Jesus. But you will continue to work good and you will bring it into completion for all of those who are in you, Jesus. And that is no different for Shirley Teacher. God, we thank you so much for her time. Lord, her presence, her joy, her worship, everything, God, we will miss it. But Lord, in it, Lord, you're going to do more in her and more through her. And we thank you for that. And so we bless her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, church, make sure you guys, um, those who are here, make sure you guys you know, at least thank her and have a conversation with her. For those on the Zoom, reach out on her Instagram, um, Facebook. Do you have Facebook? I'm not even on Facebook anymore these days. All right, yeah, she has Facebook, so you guys can Facebook her or TikTok her or whatever you guys do these days, all right? Um, but before you guys leave, um, I want you guys to just get into, like, groups of two or three, and this is what I want you guys to do, all right? The question is this. What makes it difficult for you? to treasure or to prioritize his presence. All right, you're going to share that with one another. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to pray for that person, right? Like, God, just bless them in this, that may they take your presence and treasure it above that thing, all right? Just a short thing. It should just take you guys three to five minutes, all right, in that, and then you guys are free to go, okay? So make sure, get in groups of two or three, um, do that, and then you guys are dismissed. Be blessed. Uh, Zoom.